Okay, the next thing we're going to do is put on the calf support, and this is a piece of 4 inch diameter PVC. This old one, the one I built originally, um, happened to be thick wall. I'm going to try, and I would recommend going with a thin wall PVC. It's a lot more flexible, it's going to curve around your leg a lot more. Um, you might have to buy a 10 foot piece, it's not all that expensive, I think it was $10. But just cut a 4 inch piece, so the pipe is going to be this way, cut two 4 inch pieces off. So this is going to be wrapping around your leg. Um, take a heat gun or um, a propane tape, uh, propane torch, but be really careful with it, and just bend it so it's open so you can slip your leg in there. Um, for each one, drill a uh, three-eighths inch hole. Um, sorry, quarter inch hole because it's going to be three sixteenths. Uh, uh, bolt three quarters of an inch from the top and one inch from the edge. So what we're going to do there is slip, again, a flat head. Uh, I think I've got a 4-inch flat head, Phillips head, through there with a large washer because, again, this is going to go up your leg. Um, and from the inside, you're going to slip through the top hole. Top hole, and of course, like everything else we're doing, lock washer on the outside and then a nut on the outside. And tighten it up enough where this can still turn a little bit uh, because when we get the... Uh, the um, crutches on and put this on, we're going to, when it's comfortable, we're going to mark that and we're going to drill the other hole and put the other one through. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is do the final mechanical piece of the stilt and that's putting on the, uh, the Velcro strapping that uh, helps secure your uh, calf to the bracket that we put on. Um, so. Uh, from strapworks.com is where I buy my stuff. I've got two inch polyester seat belt webbing. Uh, I use black just because the whole thing's black. Um, I get six feet, um, cut it into two, three foot, feet, foot pieces. Um, then I get two inch Velcro. Um, I get two feet of that. Um, and I would cut those into two one foot pieces, so hook and loop of each. Um, what you're going to do here is you're going to piece this all together with the uh, with the D-ring, sorry, I got two two-inch black plastic D-rings also, and that completes the order from uh, from the uh, the, the uh, strapping.com. Um, what you will do is lay out the three-foot piece, put a D-ring on one end, um, lay it over, wrap it around about five inches, and then use a stapler and staple it just to hold it. Uh, give yourself a couple inches, put about a one foot piece of the um, hook or the loop, it doesn't matter, followed by a six inch piece of the opposite hook or loop. So it's all on the same side. You've got your D ring about five inches, leave yourself a couple inches, a foot, I've got the hook here, six inches of the loop, and then I've got a turn back of about two and a half to three inches, it really doesn't matter. What I do, since I don't have a sewing machine with heavy duty thread is, I will take these two straps that I put together to my local shoe repair and he just runs the stitching up and down. I think he's charged me $10 to do that. So um, that's what you do uh, when you get that back or when you are done sewing. You will simply, and this is on the outside of the leg, is you will loosen up this washer. You won't have this one in yet. You'll loosen up that washer put it underneath, the strap underneath with the D-ring there, tighten it up, and when you put your leg in it, it will go around, it will go through the D-ring, and then it will, as I put this through with two hands, it will double back on itself around your leg, and it's a nice secure, so you've got your foot secured here and your cap secured here, very, very easy to adjust and get on and off. So that will complete this whole thing, then we start putting the foam on the outside. Okay, the next thing that we're going to work on, we're going to start working on the front um, crutches. Um, again, it should be on video where you buy these crutches. I think they're on Amazon, $37 for the pair. They are forearm crutches, because it grabs your forearm. Um, make sure they're adjustable at the bottom. They've got the adjustment. It'll come this short, but when you pull it out, it has the little uh, metal clips in there. Uh, and you can put it to whatever uh, length you want. We're not going to use this bottom part at all. So take the bottom part out and take the tip off and recycle that bottom part by a 7 8 inch, one, two, three, four foot dowel. And you're going to slip it right 
to where it seats and you're going to replace the bottom peg and you're just going to tape it on because there's going to be very little pressure to pull it off so just a little piece of tape is good all the pressure is going to be down and not up um, same thing here but I, what I want you to do is when it's seated all the way take a, uh, a one inch wood screw you know galvanized deck screw and a washer so it doesn't go through the hole and on any hole in the uh, adjustment area just drill it right in there we go and that's just going to keep this from pulling out um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start building the costume around this crunch the most difficult part of this whole process is standing up on the stilts uh, I put the, the height measurement at a good height to make the costume look good. You probably don't want to go any higher because it's more difficult to get up and more difficult to walk. Um, I would suggest starting out, definitely have somebody help you. You don't want to fall down. It's a, it's a pretty good height to fall from. Um, but start out with something. I'm on an air conditioning unit. You can go in the trunk of a car. Try to get your thighs as horizontal as possible. What's the difficult part is lifting yourself up. Uh, past the horizontal part is a problem. So make sure your shoes are tied really, really well. Uh, make sure that your, your calf supports are really tight. Um, get your feet under you as much as possible. Get your arms on the crutches. You'll want to start out by putting the crutches behind you. Just stand right up, make sure you put a crutch in front of you. Um, once you get up, you'll find it very, very comfortable. Um, you, you can stand up pretty easily, but the thing that you want to be uh, careful of is falling backwards. Frontwards is no problem. You'll, you'll see that you can stand here for hours and it's comfortable. So uh, again, have, be sure and have somebody with you. When you start walking on it, be sure you're on grass in case you fall down, but have somebody in front of you, they can break your fall. But um, ever since I've been doing this, and it's only been a year, I have not fallen. Uh, all the people that have used this, we haven't had anybody fall. Again, most difficult part is getting up and then getting back down a little bit easier because you can always just sit right back down where you were. Piece of cake. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is turn this into this. So this is simply the forearm crutch this, this is the front, the forearm crutch, uh, wrapped with our foam. Um, the foam piece here has a little bit of a reinforcement. We're going to do that right now. So you're going to take your crutch that you put the wooden dowel in and tape the end on and put the one little screw in here to hold this on. And you are going to go to a neighbor's yard and get their campaign sign that's out because it's probably right before November 1st or 7th, whatever the... Uh, Election is this is a piece of coral plastic. It's fluted plastic. It's 18 by 24. You're going to measure this line 12 inches from each end and 12 inches down, and you're going to make a couple of U shapes, and you are going to cut them out with a X-Acto knife or razor blade or scissors to something like this. It's not critical. All this is doing is supporting this foam from flapping back and forth. Um, and what you're going to do is measure 23 inches from the end, the bottom of the crutch, to this part. And you're going to put three wood screws in, two in the wood, and one in one of these holes, the adjustment holes. And you're going to make sure that that is facing forward. So this is the forward, open is the forward part of the crutch. And you're going to make sure that this is 23 inches from the bottom, screwed in three pieces, and we're going to cover it with foam next, and uh, that's going to keep the foam from flapping. So this is what it's going to look like after you screw it in, and I just put some tape on there just to hold it. Um, a little, it's, it's very, very sturdy, sturdy. So next thing we do with this piece is cover this with foam and measure out the other pieces for foam. Okay, the first piece of foam that we're going to cut is the lower leg. Um, and the foam that we're using is called a one inch charcoal firm. Um, I can't tell you what, what scientifically kind of firm, closed cell, open cell, whatever it is. 
Um, on the screen, you've got the place where I buy it. Um, they sell it in 76 by 82 inch sheets, rolled up, sent it to you. Um, no problem there. You can feel free to call them and ask them exactly what kind it is, so maybe you can get it from a local phone store. Uh, but we're going we're gonna, to uh, cut a piece so when we wrap it around the leg, it measures 17 inches from the back of the leg to the front and 28 from the top and the bottom. We're going to have a 5 inch width, so that's 10 total. 5 inch width here, a 4 inch width here. So overall it's going to be a piece 34 inches across and 28 inches top to bottom. So you can cut that in a rectangle and then cut out this shape. The shape doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. All we're going to do is make sure that it covers our support here. So that's what it looks like if you had x-ray vision. Um, and it's very, very easy to work with. So the next thing you will see is that piece of foam cut out and I'll show you how to attach it. So I cut my piece roughly 28 by 34, uh, the 34 inches of width. So I'm going to fold the thing over and I know I need 5 inches at the top. So I'm going to mark right at 5 inches. Um, I know I'm going to come halfway down, which is going to be 14 inches from this edge. So I really want to get there, come down here, and then I need a 4 inch opening at the bottom, which roughly is right there. So I'm going to mark my pattern. And again, it does not matter leaving this opening, leaving that opening. Um, you can use a utility knife, nice sharp blade, cuts easily like that. If you really want to get fancy, you can use an electric uh, electric knife, tricking carving blade. So next time you see this, this will be all cut to shape. Okay, so I've got my shape cut. Um, what I'd like you to do is mark 13 inches from the uh, end of the foot of uh, the wooden dowel, um, and you're going to wrap the support right at the 13 inch mark or whatever is close enough to cover your piece of coroplast. So we can always make adjustments but you want to cover that. Now the way you're going to hear this foam is pretty cool. This is called uh, CAMI, C-A-M-I-E 373. I think there's also a 377 uh, but just make sure that you buy this the same place you buy your foam. Really easy to work with. Make sure it's shaken up. I'll just do a little bit right now. Just coat it so it's got a light coating on it. Both pieces, you can see I've got my, uh, my otherwise messy bench all covered up. Um, and I would let this uh, cure for about a minute. And after a minute, press it together. If you have any little clamps at all, you can clamp it as you go along. And I would just work all around the thing. Uh, we'll come back in about a minute and I'll show you how sticky it is. It's been about a minute, um, just make sure it's sticky to the touch, and when you put these pieces together, as you can see, it sticks. You have a couple seconds to, uh, to reposition it. Um, if you want to really get, go, fan, go fancy, go to Home Depot and buy yourself some of these uh, 99 cent clamps. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work off of you. Um, and just go around the whole thing and just spray it. You can spray right on the wooden dowel too and it'll adhere to that. So you're spraying both sides on the edges. I usually go in about three inches from the edges and this is going to chemically bond this whole thing together. So I'm going to let that go another minute. Um, I'm going to put a series of clamps on this and we are going to glue this whole thing together.